Forest governance is a concept that is often talked about, but it is not always clear what people mean by it. In this film, we will seek to explain what it means. What is good forest governance? What is the current state of forest governance in Guyana? And why it is important for Amerindian communities to participate in the process of improving it. So, what is forest governance? Governance is about who has the power and authority to make rules and decisions about certain issues. How others make their voices heard and how governing bodies and decision makers, such as the National Assembly, are held accountable. Forest governance is about who has the power to make decisions and control what happens in Guyana's forests. It includes governance of land, which means who owns and controls the land and resources in a given area of forest. It therefore refers to how land use and management decisions have an impact on forest land, forest resources, and forest peoples. Some questions that can be asked about forest governance include what organizations, institutions, and people are involved in making and implementing decisions? What instruments and processes do they use? And what rules do they follow? For example, who decides what areas of forested land is given as a concession? Who decides that it is legal or unfair? On what basis are these decisions made? Another question to ask is, how do people making decisions on Guyana's forests take into account and protect the rights of Guyana's indigenous peoples? How are Amerindian land title areas and their proposed extension areas treated by the forest concession system? Is the free and prior informed consent of indigenous peoples respected? All these issues relate to forest governance. Good forest governance is characterized by respect for community rights, low levels of corruption, consistent and clear legislation, fair and just systems for recognizing and distributing land and resource rights, which is sometimes referred to in technical language as land tenure or forest tenure. There are six key concepts that help describe good forest governance. The decisions that are made must reflect internationally accepted norms and standards for human rights. The human rights of indigenous peoples living and depending on forests are respected only if they have clear rights to control and own the lands that they have traditionally occupied and used. The right to free prior and informed consent FPIC, is a core human rights standard for indigenous peoples. It is very important to understand that this right applies to both titled and untitled lands that are owned under customary law. In other words, according to international law, if a project is to affect your traditional customary lands, even if it is outside your existing village title boundaries, the state of Guyana has a duty to consult with the affected villages and communities to obtain their prior agreement. The right to FPIC also entails that indigenous peoples are free to decide what kind of development they want and to practice their traditional ways of life. The second principle is coordination. It is important that the actions of the different players who make decisions that impact forests are coordinated. In Guyana, government authorities working with forests, 
mining, agriculture, land use, infrastructure and marine issues can all make decisions that will impact forests. It is therefore essential to make sure that their decisions and actions do not clash with each other. Third principle, transparency. Information about actions, decisions, procedures, policies, and laws must be available to the public so that everyone in Guyana can know what is happening. If citizens are kept in the dark, they will not be able to decide whether they should approve or disapprove of governments, actions, and programs. Principle, accountability. Accountability exists when the citizens of a country have oversight to ensure that the actions and decisions that public officials make reflect their mandate and what they have committed to. Authorities are bound to inform citizens about actions and decisions and to justify them. The system should allow citizens to challenge authorities and hold them responsible if they are taking poor decisions, for example, through legal action. principle participation this principle requires that a variety of people are able to comment on and shape decisions there must be clarity about how recommendations from stakeholders will be treated and how they will influence the decision making process for example a person who lives in a village in the interior of Guyana might have a very different experience of a forest law or policy from the people sitting in an office in Georgetown but his or her opinion is just as valuable it is therefore important that a wide range of viewpoints and recommendations are taken into account. The last principle is capacity. To secure the five key principles we just talked about, it is necessary that there is enough financial, human and technical capacity in governmental agencies and ministries in Guyana. It is also vital that non-governmental representative bodies and stakeholders have sufficient time and knowledge to be involved in decision-making processes and that enough funds are available to enable this. Are these principles of human rights, coordination, accountability, transparency, participation and capacity reflected in the forest governance in Guyana? Consider the following examples. Example 1. Many indigenous communities in Guyana have reported that the lands that they have applied for to be legally recognized have not been covered in the title granted to them by the government. These decisions have been made by the Ministry of Marine Affairs without any good explanations and without the free prior and informed consent from communities. Example 2. Land title areas and extension areas are not clearly documented, neither are they properly mapped. In fact, the maps of different agencies appear to differ in many instances when it comes to Armenian titles and boundaries. This is a big problem, 
and is already causing conflicts in the interior between miners, loggers and villagers. A third example, the land titles of five communities were taken back within minutes after they were given to them during the National Tushau Council's conference in 2012. Forced concessions are being given out on land that Amerindian communities know to be theirs. In most cases, the FPIC standards is being violated outside title lands as the national laws do not properly apply the score protection for lands that have not been granted to the communities by the state. This discriminatory distinction between titled and untitled lands in the national legal framework contradicts international laws and norms regarding indigenous people's rights. Finally, as a result of government decisions, policies and legislations regarding distribution and management of land, several communities find themselves being forced into court battles that challenge the right to land and resources. Our community has been taken to court more than once. And that is a problem for us as a people. All because these lands that we've been using and occupying are not recognized as the lands of the people. So because of that, the relevant agencies would continue granting mining concessions, forestry concessions, or whatever. But in our case, it's mostly mining. And so these miners are given rights, overlooking our rights as a people. Because we in Kaku River, we depend on the rivers for drinking purposes, whatever, hunting, fishing, and knowing the, living in the area, we've seen what mining activities have done to the environment, especially the water, pollution of the water, deforestation, degradation of land, all of these things are effects of mining. And not only that, we have social issues. So it's a lot of problem. So we know that our lands have not been recognized. We should ask how decisions with such negative outcomes have been made. The fact is that most decisions are made without much transparency. Amerindians are not properly, and in many cases, not at all, involved in making decisions about the forest that will have impact on their lives, freedoms, and way of life. Since rules and policies usually are unclear or unknown to the public, the decision makers cannot be held accountable, and finally, it is not clear how whether government agencies coordinate their decisions about use of lands. All of this leads to widespread violation of international human rights law. The examples we have just given indicate that changes are necessary to make sure the forest laws and land policies in Guyana meet agreed standards and rules, including the norms set out in the Constitution and relevant human rights instruments, like the United Nations Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The Voluntary Partnership Agreement, VPA, process in Guyana can be an ideal opportunity for Amerindian communities to think about what should change and to make proposals for a future where they are part of making decisions that will impact their lives and livelihoods. The EU and the government of Guyana are expecting Amerindian communities to participate in the process of improving forest governance. Now, it is up to you to find out what you want the future to look like. Amerindian villages and representative organizations have an opportunity to say how they think land rights must be respected and how the core ethnic standards must be applied in forest governance in Guyana. Here are some questions to consider. Do the forest regulation and legislation need to change so as to ensure that it meets these norms and protection of our rights as Amerindians and the forest peoples of Guyana? How should the timber trade and forest governance change in our country? What needs to change to ensure the security of your communities and protect the forest for future generations? How would you like to see your grandchildren and the forest in the next 30 years? What is your vision for Guyana's forest and the role of indigenous people? These are questions for peoples, villages and communities to discuss internally and perhaps put forward concrete proposals to the government.